Hello there guys, my name is Coaster Child, Dogcaster Board, but built for Theme Park News and welcome to a closed but not forgotten update. It's been a while since we've done one of these, a very long while. And I'm coming back with this series big style because today we're going to be looking at the fantastic world of Hanna-Barbera at Universal Studios Orlando. Of course this was replaced by the Jimmy Neutron Nicktoon Blast and of course to this day it is now known as Despicable Me Minion, Minion Mayhem. So we're going to be talking to you about the history of the ride and also share with you my thoughts on some images that I found, some past footage that I've seen of the ride in person and also share my thoughts on what it could have been like if I had ridden it. So before we get into that, let's talk about how you can interact with the channel. So make sure you like the video if you loved it, comment down below your thoughts and opinions, please subscribe to the channel, click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. Please share with your friends, your family, and on social media. And make sure you comment down below your shout-outs for tomorrow's video. Make sure you get down below your video suggestions, which I'll save personally. Make sure you send me your merchandise on Instagram and Snapchat with your name and location. Links in the description down below. And also make sure you send in your questions in the comment section. Use the hashtag question before or after your question. They will be for our 2,000 subscriber Q&A when we hit that milestone. And also, guys, your subscription goal. If we hit 10,000 sub subscribers in the next 365 days... I will release Coast Chow merchandise, so if you want to see me at the start of every video, say if you want 20% off of merchandise, use the code CHAL, then you need to subscribe and get us to 10,000 subscribers in the next year. And for now guys, let's take a look back in time in our time machine and let's have a look at the fantastic world of Hanna-Barbera. The fantastic world of Hanna-Barbera was a motion simulator ride at Universal Studios Florida in the Universal Studios Orlando Resort, in the production central area and one of the park's original attractions. The ride soft opened on May 1st 1990, but officially opened on June the 7th. Peter N. Alexander, who was the creator and executive producer, Mario Cambo was the director and Paul Van Camp was in charge of the programming software. The ride was the very first ride filmed to be done entirely with computer graphics except the characters which were done with traditional cell animation. The ride system was manufactured by Intamin, with the vehicles designed by Ride Trade. It was designed by Totally Fun Company and MCA Planning and Development. The storyline was that Dick Dastardly of Wacky Racers fame had kidnapped Elroy Jetson. Yogi Bear gives chase and the audience is in for the ride of their lives. The facility which housed the ride features several areas in which the guests were moved throughout. The outside queue area where people waited in line featured several TVs that showed Hannibal Barbera cartoons on a loop. The guests were then taken into a pre-show area where the storyline for the ride was revealed. Inside the pre-show there were three projection screens, two oval shaped screens and a rectangular square screen. On one of the oval screens Yogi Bear appeared pestering guests for food. Boo Boo shows up to inform him that the guests are here for an animation demonstration by William Hanna and Joseph Barbera. The two, live action, appear in the square screen and begin talking about animation leading to drawing Elroy Jetson, who magically comes to life and jumps out of the paper three-dimensionally. Hannah goes on to talk about computer animation using Dick Dastardly's aeroplane, in this case a spaceship. Dastardly and Mutley soon show up from inside the spaceship's depths, requesting that they be part of Hanna-Barbera's next project. However, Barbera informs him that Elroy Jetson is next. Coincidentally, at the time of the ride's opening, the release of Jetsons, the movie, was only several weeks away. Followed by the Flintstones and Scooby-Doo. In a fit of rage, Dastardly kidnaps Elroy and forcefully pulling him into the computer using the suction of a toilet plunger gun, claiming, If I'm not the star of the next project, then no one will be. I'm taking Elroy where you'll never find him. The computer begins to self-destruct and the two run away. Yogi and Boo Boo, feeling they should do something, go, with the ride guests, into a rocket ship, which is the main theatre, to go save Elroy from the evil plans Dastardly and Mutley have in store for him. When the riders enter the main theatre, the riders are seated in a rocket ship with Yogi as the captain. The power source is a large rubber band. The force is so strong that everyone ends up going back in time to bedrock. The riders fly off a cliff and through Mr. Sight's construction site before flying into the main city. Yogi and the riders chase after Dastardly through the streets, dodging cars, residents of bedrock, including Wilma and Betty, and Yogi ends up chasing Fred Flintstone and Barney Rubble, who are driving Fred's car, down the street by accident. 
The riders fly up after Dastardly into the skies and through a vortex. The riders end up chasing Dastardly through a cemetery in the middle of the night and the riders are on a near collision near the mystery machine that Scooby-Doo and Shaggy are driving, leading them to a haunted castle where they encounter ghosts. The riders fly around the haunted house looking for Dastardly down hallways and corridors, dodging Scooby and Shaggy, or are left hanging on a chandelier when the riders chase after Dastardly into another vortex. This time the riders end up into the future, into Orbit City, dodging flying cars and buildings. It's not long before Elroy's family, except Judy and Astro, who are absent from the ride experience, appear and see Elroy captured and chased after Dastardly with the, ri Dastardly with the riders going into the Coney Skyland, a futuristic amusement park. The riders fly on a roller coaster track after the villain and end up going down a steep drop when Rosie the Robot, flying with the Jetsons, opens up Dastardly's rocket and George grabs and saves Elroy. Then Dastardly and Mutley get surrounded by thousands of flying cop cars and both are dropped in a flying sail gel. The Jetsons thank them and the riders fly back home through a vortex and crash land back at the station on a giant inflator bumper reading end. Yogi gives them a farewell message. So long. Folks, thanks for joining in the ride. I'll see you on the outside. A lamp comes down from the top on which Yogi pulls the light switch, the screen goes black, and the ride ends. After the show, guests were escorted into an interactive area where they could interact with various technologies geared towards children. Following this area was a gift shop titled Hanna-Barbera's Store, where they could buy, purchase, and Hanna-Barbera merchandise. The ride closed on October 20th, 2002, ready for its transformation into Jimmy Neutron's Nicktoon Blast for the 2003 season, which would be later on transformed into the current ride system, Despicable Me, Minion Mayhem. So that, my friends, is the history behind the fantastic world of Hanna-Barbera attraction. Oh my goodness, that was a lot to read. <laughs> um, I want to say this right off the bat, right? It looks like a fun little attraction. I'll let you into a bit of a secret. I watched the... The movie that's on the screen in the main theatre uh, during the ride experience. They've got the actual full video of the um, the movie that you see on ride on YouTube. So I've, I watched it and uh, obviously you'll notice that's where I got those screenshots from. And my god that looks an awesome ride doesn't it? Um, it looks like a really nice attraction and I think that... Um, I think it'll still be a fun attraction. I think, um, you know, it was a shame that to see it go. Uh, obviously, Despicable Me's come in now, and I've seen positive reviews from that. So obviously, it's a it's a great replacement in the end. I'm sure Jimmy Neutron entertained generations after the Hanna Barbera attraction ended its life cycle. Uh, but this particular attraction was very important for the time, and I think it was a great modern motion simulator attraction and I'm sure it's a motion simulator that really inspired the future motion simulator attractions in the the future universals you know the different uh, big technology attractions I, I, I could think of a couple of uh, big technology attractions that have been and gone at Universal now both out of both parks as well um, disaster a motion motion picture starring you uh, that's a video I want to do about uh, in the future because I think that's you know, that's got the massive technology and it's got the original store and I think it's rides like that that we see today with the big technology and the big animatronics and everything like that. Everything starts from somewhere and I think it's one of it's it's an attraction like the Fantastic World of Hanna Barbera, which is a simple intimate motion simulator ride, um, based on the cartoons. That just inspires future attractions from years to come. Not just the attractions that replace the Hanna-Barbera attraction, but attractions in every other area of Universal Orlando, Universal Hollywood, Universal in China, and you know across the seas, uh, and future Universal parks. You know, Epic Universe. Obviously, that's been you know halted now, so we don't know if it's going to be 2023 by the time that's open or 2024. But you know, obviously with the pandemic, that's been halted. So, but. You know, some of the dark rides that are going to be in that park, you know, I bet they were inspired, like the rest of them, by the smaller simulator rides. And I think that that's what grew the inspiration of dark rides. And I think that it's tra attractions like uh, Fantastic World of Hanna-Barbera that we need to re respect, respect for its time uh, and its life cycle. So, it was an incredible attraction to research. Um, it took me back to some old times. Um, 
I've actually got a couple of leaflets from Universal Orlando, so I bet that either Jimmy Neutron or Hanna Barbera might be in one of the old ones. Don't know yet, so I'll have to double check with that one. Uh, but there we go. So that is this closed but not forgotten update on the fantastic world of Hanna Barbera. Like I said, I think it really inspired the future Dark Rise, and I think that. Uh, I would have really, I would have personally really loved this attraction because it's a nice, neat, cute little attraction, and not even little on like a little, little scale. I mean, little is in a large scale for its time. So, I think for a 90s dark ride, I think it packed a lot in to a space. So I think that, uh, like me, I think everyone will be really, really grateful that this attraction was around because I think it inspired so many future dark rides. Uh, on a grander scale so um, there we go so thank you very much for watching this closed but not forgotten video it's been a while since we've done one of these but I'll keep, keep your video suggestions coming in guys uh, get some closed but not forgotten uh, videos going make sure you check out the playlist make sure we haven't missed any out uh, but for now guys thank you very very much make sure you like comment subscribe and for now guys my name is Coast Chow keep on the Coast of Life and I'll see you guys in the next video very very soon take care guys have an awesome day